Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Now, shall I start? If it's okay, I'm going to uh, do a couple things first. This is Steve Hargadon, and this is the Library 2.012 conference. And we have just a terrific uh, set of sessions for you, including this keynote session right now from Yu Chin Zung, who is the director of the Shanghai Library, who will say his name much better than I did. But we're very glad to have him here. Thanks to our sponsors for the conference. San Jose State University is the primary conference partner. We thank them for all of their hard work. Follow Software, Mighty Bell, and Blackboard Collaborate also provide support. This is a chance for you to let us know where you're listening from. So to the left of the map, click on the star. Then you can click on the map and maybe shout out in the chat. Looks like Australia. Singapore, Canada, Hong Kong via Canada, Sydney, Malaysia, Indiana, Thailand, California. I think we're seeing a time zone uh, effect here, right? Someone on the east coast of the United States is up pretty late right now. Anyway, we're really delighted to have you here. Thank you for joining us wherever you are. And if you're listening to the recording, we thank you for doing so. And now I'll turn the time over to you. Thank you very much indeed, Steve. Uh, I'm Wu Jianzong, the director of the Shanghai Library. Thank you for your coming. Now I'm at my office. Shall I start now? Yes, please. We've lost your sound again. Is it OK? Now it is. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Steve, for your kind words. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your coming. This is Wu Jianzong uh, from Shanghai Library. My local time is 11 o'clock in the morning. So I should say good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your all coming. And I today, I would like to share with you my recent thinking on librarianship. And I'm sure more inspiration and guidance could, uh, could be attained from you. Uh, transition and transcendence is the theme uh, being adv advocated by libraries throughout the world. ICT has not only changed the way of human production and life, but also exert the profound impact on the development of libraries. Library has faced three challenges in the past in the past twenty years. The first came in the mid nineteen eighties when the advent of a paperless society cast a shadow over the future of libraries. Sorry, I cannot move the slide, oh yes, opposite to the prediction of their extinction. However, libraries witnessed an unprecedented boom of construction in the late 20th century, with their role acknowledged as a space for people to exchange information and experience. The second challenge the second challenge occurred at the turn of the century due to the increasing popularity of the World Wide Web. Concerns aroused that the navigation system of the Internet and the search engines would replace library as the primary channel for information access. Now that the Internet could provide a variety of information, what's the point of maintaining libraries? Sitting at the core of the issue was the question whether library could provide people with more effective means than the navigation system or search engines. <coughs> Over the past decade, libraries have taken full advantage of ICT as well as other high-tech achievements to develop service and products that are conduce conducive to library development. The prevalence of digital library, in particular, 
enabled the larvae to escape narrowly from obsolescence. The third challenge arrives today when the specter of paperless society reappears. Discussion is underway concerning the tipping point between digital publishing and the traditional publishing. Sales from digital publishing are forecast to account for 50% of the entire publishing market by 2020. Another prediction is made by U.S. Ministry of Education, which foresees 80% of acquisition budget of university libraries being allocated to electronic resources. Yet the majority of libraries nowadays remain to be book-oriented in terms of management and service delivery, unprepared mentally or physically for the current challenge. Challenges for China and for the West, different in form, same in nature. Challenges are bound for library, the most serious of which is the substantial reduction of public funding. The SILIP in the United Kingdom is estimated that more than 600 public libraries in England could close with a reduction of 4,000 to 6,000 full staff equivalent, equivalent staff, full-time equivalent staff. Similarly, according to, all, to a report by the Huffington Post on November the 16th, 2011, a survey shows that nearly 40% of American mayors plan to reduce hours, shed in, in employees, or make other cutbacks in the coming months, while many county libraries have already eliminated branches entirely. Obviously, libraries in Europe and the United States are all struggling in the same mire. In contrast, libraries in China are undergoing vigorous growth in recent years. Take a public library as an example. Almost every three and a half days witnessed a new library building in the, far, in the first decade of the new century. The new libraries are not only well equipped, but built in increasingly large size. Hubei Provincial Library and the Liaoning Provincial Library, both of which are to be opened soon, respectively, cover an area of 100,000 square meters. There are currently 238 public libraries in Shanghai, with each of the 17 districts or counties and 212 sub-districts or townships having its own library. Another 5,200 communities and suburban villages, which are not included into statistical calculation, have reading rooms or of certain size. The new building of Puto District Library, opened two years ago, features an area of 35,000 square meters, whereas that of Pudong District Library covers over 60,000 square meters. The Shanghai Library is 83,000 square meters in size, and its new building being planned will reach 80,000 square meters also. China is a populous nation, and Shanghai particularly is a metropolis with rapidly growing population. Despite the continuous increase of book budget over these years, public libraries in Shanghai are far more underfunded than their counterparts in the United States and Europe. According to some survey, expenditure of public library on book purchase is in Shanghai was only $1 per, pact, per capita in 2006, while that of Singapore was $5.6 US dollars, and that of New York was $7.
Shanghai is one of the most developed cities in China, is relatively blessed, and the whole picture in China is grayer. Based on the national population, the expenditure on books by public, li public libraries in mainland China was only 12 cents per capita in 2008. That is American dollars. Most of libraries, most libraries are stuck in the old status with traditional management and service. As the Chinese saying, as the Chinese saying goes, poverty gives rise to a desire for change. Libraries in Europe and the United States learned to discover new opportunities and innovation power after experiencing the pains of a tightening budget. Idea Store in UK I just uh, visited now, visit uh, two days ago, uh, a week ago, sorry, and Range View libraries in the United States are the very products under the pressure of funding cuts. Libraries as such map out a new path of transition and transcendence, innovate the models of management and service in the new era, and regain the trust of readers who are coming back to libraries. China and the West are facing with different challenges, which are actually the same in nature. I often say to our Chinese colleagues, although we are having a good time, we still need to take precautions to ensure substantive development and quality enhancement, not to pay too much attention on hardware. It is a painful process of restructuring from paper-oriented libraries to omnimedia omni libraries. I believe the whole world is confront confronting the same problem, that is to keep up with times and truly achieve the paradigm shift. Today, library is in the exploratory phase of paradigm shift. There is no mature model to follow, since both libraries in China and elsewhere are wrestling with the new social environment. Three basic elements should be taken into account to realize a veritable transition, namely people, resource, and space. First element is people. There are three levels of transition. First, library opens to the society. It serves its parent organization and operates according to the needs of its users. I often say to the people that modern libraries start with the book clubs. So that is people. People meet first, and then they share ideas and share books, and then we have public libraries. So I should say library starts, modern library starts with people. Second, library not only serves the visiting readers, but also has to reach out of the library and serve all the stakeholders. Third, library regards people as resources and attempts to combine human resources with book resources. The highest level of transition can be realized by strengthening the interactions and exchanges between librarians and readers, as well as between people and information. The actualization of three levels of transition in a subsequence will end up in the convergence of people and the books. By the same token, the element of resource is supposed to go through the three levels of transition. First, after becoming an open social institution, library opens its reading and lending services in accordance with readers' needs and thus enter the age of circulation. With the advent of ICT, the method of circulation developed from one-to-one to one to, one to multiplicity whereas the coexistence of physical and virtual worlds extends circulation beyond the library building, leading library towards the age of communication. However, 
this method of transmission is one way, along with the development of Web 2.0 technology. New resources, such as blocks and various kinds of unstructured information, are entering the area of concern of library. Library will thus be upgraded to a higher level to bring about interaction of people and information. From the perspective of space, transition starts from enhancing the value of library as a physical space. That is the first level. Then we should develop its role in the city as a third space system, to cooperating with other cultural institutions. That is the second level. What is more important is to further to explore the function of library as a communication space that highly integrates the virtual and the physical entities. That is the third level. When the three elements, namely people, resources, and space, all fulfill the highest levels of transition, there will come the interactions, integrations of people and books, of librarians and library users, of people and information, and of physical space and virtual space. This is the highest realm of library we are expecting. Library is a space that connects people. New York Public Library, uh, sorry, New York University Libraries, for instance, make clear at the outset in strategic plan that library should become a connector of people. The library should facilitate access to colleagues and interdisciplinarity and create places to interact formally and informally. The library should be a tool and a connector that emphasizes the common activities and interests of researchers regardless of disciplinary boundaries. So connecting people is the core of modern library service. The recent years have witnessed the transition of the Shanghai Library in four aspects, from library of books to library of people, from responding to demands to discovering demands, from reading space to learning environment, and from cooperation with libraries to collaboration with society. Now I first talk about from library of books to library of people. The library attached, the Shanghai Library attached the great importance to mining the value of library as the third place. Libraries used to attract readers with service of book loans. Nowadays, the opening hours have been extended from eight, 48 hours a week to 84 hours a week. Books can be borrowed in any of the 238 public libraries in Shanghai with one same card. As a result, the number of books circulated surged by 67.5% within five years, from 17 million <coughs> in 2005 to 29 million in 2009. Yet, only 1.3 books are being borrowed per capita annually, lagging behind the global average number of four to five volumes per person per year. Along with the efforts to increase circulation, the Shanghai Library pays similar attention to high quality cultural events to attract readers. Ever since its inception in 1978, Shanghai Library Lecture had been held 2,289 times as of July 2012, attracting an accumulated number of 1.2 million readers to greet the forthcoming expo. The library organized 100 seminars on the World Expo between 2003 and 2010. In 2005, the program was awarded by the Ministry of Culture of China with an innovation prize. 
in the year of 2011, there were 37,723 lectures, exhibitions, and reading clubs organized by public libraries in Shanghai with an attendance of 3.7 million, while an average of 25 programs are available, available per 5,000 population in America and European metropolitan libraries. There are only eight programs here in Shanghai. Comparing with New York Public Library, the Shanghai Library alone conducted 1,324 cultural programs in 2011, attracting 266,745 readers, while the New York Public Library conducted 1,634 cultural programs in the same year, attracting 100,000 readers. Judging from the development of trends of international library, public libraries in future will rely much, rely more on reading activities and cultural exchanges to appeal to users. The recent forum of our own, a new series of the Shanghai Library Lecture, invites readers to be their own lecturers, which therefore becomes another channel to promote participation and interactions among library users. In the years to come, the Shanghai Library, while maintaining the level of circulation, will further innovate its activities and the popularity of the publicity of the events in order to attract more readers to the library. Now the second, from responding to demands to discovering demands. We used to evaluate, evaluate service capability by the amount of information we provided while ignoring the process and result of readers' use of, of the information. How could we provide effective service in the absence of a systematic and a comprehensive understanding of readers' demands. Therefore, we cannot respond to demands passively. Rather, we should go further to discover and even to inspire demands so that the latter could be satisfied, satisfied at the earliest possible time. Shanghai Manu compiled jointly by the United Nations the International Exhibitions Bureau and the Shanghai Municipality listed the participation of the Shanghai Library in 2010 Shanghai World Expo among the best practices since the case not only is evidences of the evidences the function of library to provide information, but also this demonstrates library's role as a source of innovation and as an actor to participate in, coordinate, and lead city development. The Shanghai Library set up a special reading room and, and website for Expo, issued over 350 feature newspaper clip, clippings and 100 information bulletins, published the Expo Info series, and organized 100 Expo seminars. Its experts were involved in the works of theme development and a foreign organization, as well as in the drafting of Shanghai Declaration and the Shanghai Menu. The library was also identified to store the time chip, which contains the 100 most innovative predictions for life in the year 2038 and which will be activated for the first time in that year. The World Expo provided Shanghai Library with an opportunity for extended services. We believe that today, libraries should not only actively promote literacy, but also participate in government decision making, in research and innovation for the research community, as well as in industrial development for corporate 
and individuals. Every year, about 22,000 questions are answered by reference librarians in the Shanghai Library, and another 6,000 answered online together with domestic and foreign colleagues. The Shanghai Library Messenger, the micro-blogging, was opened in Sina.com. Meanwhile, the library undertakes about 400 research projects at an annual basis. Shanghai Information Service Platform, a sub-web website of the library, enjoys an average CTR of 900,000 per month, and had published a total of 5,839 review articles by the end of 2011. The Shanghai Library will give full play to their professional strengths and expertise and strengthen interactions with readers via face-to-face -face communication and social media, assuming a more active intermediary role in the process of urban development. Now I talk about the third section from reading space to learning environment. Library used to emphasize serving visiting readers with a quiet reading environment. The design of traditional reading rooms are, just as pointed out by the Liberian Emeritus of Yale, Scott Bennett, favors designing for service and for the showing of library materials, which constitutes its biggest flow. Entering the new century, however, library is advocating the concept of ubiquitous service, providing readers with more convenient access and one-stop service for all media. Shanghai Library has made some recent attempts at a one-stop service and a mobile library with the purpose of creating a comfy, comfy learning environment that integrates physical and virtual means available in the, in the news reading room, as you can see in the picture, are over 1,000 newspapers, 500 e-papers, and a four large touch screens displaying newspapers and also TV news. Starting from 2010, the Shanghai Library launched a new technology demo center and has by far collected 46 models of e-book readers by 20 manufacturers, enabling readers not only to experience e-reading, but also to lend any of the 800 e-book readers through these devices. Readers could read 1.25 million e-books purchased by the library, including 50,000 internet novels and 10,000 serious novels. The center has become, therefore, a place where readers interact with e-book device providers and content providers. Current efforts are also being made to synchronize all the digital resources to cloud the library and to promote this digital reading plan throughout the city. As of 2011, there are 2,203 computers for public use in the Shanghai Library and 3,829 in other public libraries in Shanghai, totaling 6,032 divided by the local population of 23 million, the number of computers at the disposal of each 5,000 people will be 1.3. At present, each branch library has its own room for digital reading, equipped with 16 computers on average with access to the internet. Among them, five libraries provide lending service of e-book readers. Now the last section from co cooperation with libraries to collaboration with society. 
The Shanghai Library features a resource-sharing network with local university and school libraries, libraries of research institutions, and other public libraries. It is also the headquarters of Industrial Information League, connecting scientific and technological organizations and corporations. Under the program of Window of Shanghai, it has acquired a partnership with over 80 libraries and relevant entities in 48 countries and regions across the six continents. While the library focused much on interaction with other libraries, it is now shifting its attention to collaboration with all sectors of the society. In terms of reader services, the Shanghai Library cooperates with governmental departments concerned to build a room for creativity and a platform for small and medium-sized enterprises, offering information consultation service to small and medium-sized enterprises. It's, it signed an agreement with the Shanghai City Local Records Office to facilitate readers' access to local gazettes. It will also establish jointly with Shanghai Municipal Tourism Administration a tourist library cr creating tourist information stations in branch libraries. In terms of trans information services, the library joins the Shanghai Decision-Making decision Consultation Committee, Shanghai Information Center, and the Shanghai Foreign Affairs Office to advance consultation researches and the sharing of resources as, as such. While undertaking about 40 government research projects annually, the Shanghai Library also works with relevant government departments to edit consultation reports, such as the development of key manufacturing industries in the world, the development of key service industry in the world, and the Global Business Development Report, which are published by the Shanghai Library's publishing house annually. In addition, the Shanghai Library provides competitive intelligence of enterprises such as Shanghai Elect Electric Group and the Shanghai Huayi Chemical Company as well as intelligence training for enterprises like Shanghai Bao Steel Group. Uh, likewise, it hosts a biannual inter international conference attended by re representatives from both business and economic com communities. It is our plan to strengthen cooperation as such with all sectors of society at home and abroad to explore a new model or innovative knowledge service. Collaborations will be conducive to enhancing service quality and staff capabilities, as well as increasing the visibility of libraries in society. Thank you very much indeed. So that's all of my talk. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you would like to applaud, the applause button is kind of hidden, but it's underneath the smiley face icon, and then look for the applause icon there. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was fascinating. Those of you who would like to download the slides can do so by going to File, Save, Whiteboard, and you can save the whiteboard. And I'm going to turn the recording on. Yes, I'm ready. Sorry? I'm ready to answer questions if there's any. Oh, terrific. So if you'd like to ask a question, you can put your question in the chat. Dr. Wu, do you have any details or examples for inspiring demand? Uh, yes, we, yes, shall I answer now? Please. Yes. Uh, usually, library is waiting for demands but we have to inspire the demands. So we go out of the library. For instance, when Expo starts, uh, we go to Expo and uh, find uh, the, the, the demands. 
So because uh, the expo is the first time held and held the first time in in China, so nobody knows about. Uh, very few people know about World Expo. So we have to provide materials. We have to provide research materials also, and also we published some uh, publications on World Expo and answer questions as well. So that is the example. If you have another question, you can put yes. it in the chat, or you can raise your hand, and I'll give you the microphone. Ko, I think maybe you were applauding, but if your hand is up to ask a question, I'd be glad to have you do that. Ko, I've given you microphone privileges. To turn your mic on, you click on the talk button at the top left. Or maybe you were just applauding. David, uh, I have given you microphone privileges. Click on the mic icon at the top left. Thank you. Uh, I enjoyed the presentation. Uh, are there any needs for English-speaking librarians from the West to work in China? Uh, yes. Uh, we, the Shanghai Library, uh, uh, in, in Shanghai Library, we have about, uh, every year we have five people, five volunteers from uh, worldwide, for instance, uh, from United States and Britain, to come to the library to work with uh, our staff. And also we have some people speaking uh, in different languages, for instance, English, uh, German, uh, French, and also Japanese. So they, uh, they serve as volunteers. If we have some uh, international visitors, these people will come uh, to, to meet them and to talk with them in their languages. Thank you. So there's a question, Dr. Wu, about uniforms. Uh, why was this implemented, and is it a measure to solidify a library brand? Uh, yes, well, we think the library brand is very important. So we have the same uniform, same uniform, and also we have uh, a set of uh, uh, something like uh, a corporate culture, uh, and also the same image, uh, the the uniform image, the uniform forms. So I think the, it it is important that uh, to to let people see the library is. Uh, is highly branded uh, institution. Uh, as you can see from the uh, PowerPoint, uh, this is the uh, uh, this is the Shanghai Library winning the the prize at the uh, uh, at the contest uh, in Shanghai. Uh, yes. Good. Any other questions? If you do have a question, you can put it in the chat or you can raise your hand. I think we may be done. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Steve, and also all my uh, friends and colleagues. I welcome you to Shanghai. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thank you for this presentation. I'm going to turn the recording off. Thank you. So Lou Pei Wen, if you have a question, you can click on the talk button at the top left. I don't think that question is coming, so I think we'll stop again. Yes? Yes. Uh, yes, do. we have the cooperation. We have the cooperation with the Confucius Institute uh, uh, in, in the United States. And also we have, uh, 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 you, you know we have a window of Shanghai, 
we have a collaboration with university libraries and also schools, library schools. Yes. Uh, we do, uh, the Shanghai Library is an adult library. We have a Shanghai Municipal Library. So Shanghai Library provides some children's service, but not uh, this is our main service. We have a Municipal Children's Library in Shanghai. Yes? Lu Pei Wen, yes? Thank you. Okay, I think now we are finally done. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much.